Hi. What we have here is a 1955 Austin Healey 100M. It's a car that has had a Concours restoration performed on it to gold standards, meaning not only did they do a great job of restoring it, but they got all of the details right. It's been restored in its original colors, old English white with blue leather. The car has been confirmed as a factory produced 100M and it is a blast to drive. What I love the most about this car is the driving experience. The Austin Healey 100 was designed by a race car driver, Donald Healey, and when you get in the car, you can feel it. The balance is perfect. 50-50 front to rear, the car is very nimble, and this car, being 100M, left the factory with a full array of competition or performance parts added by the factory. Some owners will put a slightly more modern gearbox or bigger tires, but not this car. This car is very authentically restored, so when you drive it, it feels like a 1955 driving experience. You just can't help but grin as you slide it around the corners. So the 100M Austin Healey is the high performance version of the Austin Healey 100. And the creation of that car is something of a Cinderella story. The car was created by Donald Healey. He was a rather famous English race car and rally driver from the 1920s and 1930s. His biggest success was an outright win in the Monte Carlo Rally in 1931. He went on in 32 and placed second. 1934, he placed third. He was really good. By 1945, after the war, he decided to create his own company to manufacture sports cars. But at any point in history, being a small automobile manufacturer has always been difficult. And so it was for him. There was never enough money. There were never enough production facilities. They made great cars, but they didn't produce enough to become financially successful. 1952, they decided to produce a sports car that would go 100 miles an hour. They called it the Healey 100. So they had a stand on the London Motor Show at Earl's Court. They had finished building their prototype and the show opened and their car was the star of the show. It was the darling. It uses an Austin A90 engine, four cylinder uh, engine and Austin A90 running gear. Austin was one of the biggest manufacturers of automobiles in England. And the chairman of the board knew a good idea when he saw one. And overnight, they struck a deal. The Donald Healey Motor Car Company went from being a startup to being one of the largest sports car manufacturers in England. Um, and the rest of the story was, was written. They produced uh, thousands upon thousands of Austin Healey sports cars over the next 15 years. It took about almost 10 years of hard work, but they went from a startup to one of the largest manufacturers almost overnight. When you hear people talk about Austin Healey 100Ms, there's some slightly confusing terms. Sometimes they're referred to as Austin Healey Le Mans, sometimes Austin Healey 100M. You'll hear people talk about dealer installed cars and factory built cars. So why don't we walk through the progression of how they were made and I think it'll help explain what these terms mean. So production of the Austin Healey 100 started in early 1953 and over the summer, the summer of 1953, Donald Healey took two production cars with some engine modifications and they took them to Le Mans in France for the 24 hour race. They were racing against factory built race cars, Ferrari, Jaguar, Aston Martin. And after 24 hours, they placed second and third in class, 
12th and 14th overall. They beat Porsche, they outlast Aston Martin, they outlast Alfa Romeo and Lancia. It was a fantastic success. And of course, racing success at Le Mans drove sales. So in 1954, they produced the Le Mans engine modification kit. So now your Austin Healey could have the same modifications that the race cars that went to Le Mans had. And this is what an Austin Healey Le Mans is. Any 104 Healey that has a Le Mans kit installed. In 1955, the factory created the 100M. So 100M is a 104 that has a Le Mans kit installed by the factory. You could also buy the kit over the counter from the dealer and the dealer could install it on your car for you. So dealer installed or factory built 100M. You can have exactly the same car that they raced at the factory. So what we have here is a 1955 Austin Healey 100M. The 100M is the high performance model of the Austin Healey 100. This car has been restored to Concours level. It was judged a gold level restoration, meaning that not only is it well restored, but they got all of the details right. It has been restored back into its original colors, Old English white, with blue leather. We have a heritage certificate for the car from England showing that the car is matching number and the car's also been um, looked over by the 100M Le Mans registry. Those are the keepers of the flame and they have authenticated that it is a factory built 100M. So what do we love about this car? We love the driving experience. This car was designed by a race car driver and you can feel it. It has perfect balance, 50-50 weight distribution, front to rear, it is very nimble. It has a 2.6 liter long stroke engine, so it's very torquey, which makes it really forgiving when you drive it. Also, this car being an M has the competition high performance parts, so it's got more get up and go than your average Austin Healey. Some owners will modify their cars. They'll put bigger tires, bigger wheels. They might change the gearbox to make it a little bit smoother, but this has none of that. There's a set of Dunlop road speed tires, which are from the era, 1955. Now they're modern tires, but they're still skinny. Uh, so when you get behind the wheel, you get a genuine 1955 driving experience. It will slide in the corners. It's very manageable, but if you go in the corner a little too, a little too quick, you'll slide out the other side. Well-balanced, peppy, it's a joy to drive. And if you ask yourself the question after driving it, could I drive this in the 24 hour of Le Mans? The answer is yes, I, I'd probably kill me, but I feel like I could do it. It's just such a great car and such a comfortable car to drive quickly. It's not only well restored, but it is, it is fun. I love it. One of the great features of these cars is the lay-down windshield. It's for high-speed high speed touring. Let's lay it down. Do that. There we are. And now you're ready for high-speed motoring. So, this here is the heritage certificate issued by the British Motor Industry Heritage Trust in the UK. That's the company 
the organization that has the factory records. So if you give them the chassis number, they will send the certificate with all of the other numbers, original colors, production date, and any options that the car was built with. This is, if you're checking to make sure that your car is matching number, you need the certificate. This is the 100M Le Mans registry certificate, which confirms that this car is a factory-built 100M. They look at body numbers, uh, engine number, and the various uh, high-performance parts. These guys are the keepers of the flame. They make sure that the cars are correct, that they're certified and they're genuine cars, not fakes. And this is the certificate from the Austin Healey Concourse Registry. They have a panel of judges that inspect the vehicle and then they give it a level, be it bronze, silver or gold. And this was, has achieved gold level certification, meaning it's a well restored car and all of the details are correct. And if you're buying a 100M Healey, the most valuable ones will come with all three certificates. All right, let's check the numbers. First number to look for is the chassis number. The chassis plate's on the firewall on the right side, and you can see on ours that it looks kind of old, which it should after 60 years. And what you want to see is an old original chassis plate. A new one is a little bit disconcerting. Ours is a nice original, and the number on it matches the number on the heritage certificate. The next number we want to look for is the engine number. It's down next to the head. And once again, you can see that it matches. It has the same number as on the certificate. Now, on the end of the engine number, there is an M. And people will ask the question, well, does that mean that my car is 100M? Because it has an M in the engine number, which is a logical question, but the answer is no. That just tells us which production plant produced the engine. The next number to look for is the body number. And we find that in a few places on the car. Up above the chassis plate, there is a tag. It's painted the same color as the car, so it can be a little bit hard to see sometimes. But there's two numbers in there. A batch number, which is an internal Austin Healey number that they used, and then the body number. And there are seven places on the vehicle that we need to look to see the body number. Let's have a look. So let's start with the number on the trunk lid. So on the side of the trunk lid, there's a tab that the trunk lid prop attaches to, and the number is stamped right around there. You can normally see it. We've removed the paint so we can get a clear view, and that number should match the number on the certificate, the body number, which it does. Then we have the four pieces of cockpit molding. That's these silver pieces that go around the cockpit. On the back edge of these is stamped the body number. So in a minute, we'll, we'll pull them off. We know that this piece of molding does not have the number in it, but the other three do. We'll pull one of them off just to have a look. And then the hood, on the side of the hood right here. When it's painted, you can't read the number very well. So we've removed the paint. And if we have a careful look, we can see that the number is exactly the same as the body number on the certificate. And the, th the last place is on the front valence. That's this panel between the front sheet metal and the bumper. And you have to remove the bumper to see the number. Um, we've, had a, we've had a careful look and the number does not appear to be there. So whenever there was a parking lot bump or the bumper got dented, this is an aluminum panel and they tended to get bent. So the most common place that one of the numbers would be missing is this panel. And in fact, on this car, we've not been able to locate the number. Let's have a look at the cockpit molding. So whenever you're, whenever you're looking at buying one of these, it's not uncommon for the owner to assume that all these numbers are matching. But what you really do have to do is you really have to remove the panels and have a look.
and on this end here is where the number is. And once again, it matches the heritage certificate. So this one does, this one and the one at the rear matches, and that driver's door does not have that number. So let's start with the distributor. The distributor is here right below the engine number, and the number on the distributor is special. It's numbered on the underside, so it's very difficult to see. But if you take your cell phone and take a phone, uh, photograph of it, with a little trial and error, you'll be able to see the number. And on an early 100M distributor, the number should be 40422. And on the later 100M distributors, the number should be 40520. Um, and we've looked at ours, and it is in fact correct. Next is the vacuum advance, which is the piece on the side of the distributor. And uh, there's a number right on the end. So right on the end of the vacuum advance, there's actually three numbers, 5, 17, and 10. And once again, you'll probably need to either take a photograph of it with your cell phone or remove the distributor and vacuum advance to, to get a good look at it. And we've had a look and the vacuum advance is also correct on this car. Next, let's have a look at the intake manifolds and the carburetors. So let's take a look at the intake manifolds, the carburetors and the cold air box. The original cold air boxes were made out of uh, thin aluminum. They were quite flimsy. Um, in all the years, we've only seen one original cold air box. They just tended to stress, crack and fall apart. So a good, you know, authentic reproduction cold air box is quite acceptable. It has the Le Mans tag, little brass tag on it. And the tag reads that this car has been fitted with a Le Mans modification kit. The intake manifolds, these, those are the pieces that the carburetors uh, mount to. There should be two numbers. There's a casting number on the inside of each, and it'll be 1B2894 on one and 1B2893 on the other. And these uh, intake manifolds have the correct numbers. Next are the two carburetors. They're uh, bigger carburetors. Um, they'll have a casting number on the side of each carburetor, AUC6040 on each carburetor. Now, correct original 100M carburetors will also have an etching number. Now, it's on the side of the carburetor here, and I think just at the front, and it's quite difficult to see, but the, um, uh, the rear carburetor will have the number 6047, and the front carburetor will have the number 6053 and they're just an etching number done by hand in each of the, each of the carburetors. Um, when they were putting the cold air box on the car, what they discovered was that there's a brace right under here and it was in the way. So the easiest way to resolve it is to take the bracket off the top of the brace and the brace is designed to hold the front shroud, uh, give it some support. So they removed the bracket on the top of the brace and they just bent it out of the way. And then they manufactured a different brace that they added. So there's a special brace just under here. When you look at it, what you'll see is it's a brace that has two 45 degree angles. So you'll look for this, this bracket on the top that has two 45 degree angles. And when we got this car, everything was correct except uh, that bracket was missing. So we found a correct bracket, painted it, and we have fitted it to the car. While we're in the cockpit, let's have a look at the key number. Here it is right here. That number is also on the heritage certificate. It's a small thing, but you want to check to make sure that it matches. So next, let's look at the brace in front of the radiator. So you'll notice that there are two X braces and the one on the driver's side the leg that heads down towards the center, there should be a kink in it on a factory 100M. It's a strange thing, but it's something to look for. And the reason that that is there is because when they put the hot camshaft, the 100M camshaft in the car, uh, in the engine, they did it with the engine in the car. So they could either remove the engine to install the cam, or the way they decided to do it was they removed the grill 
removed the radiator and then slid the old camshaft out, the standard cam, and put the 100M cam in. What they discovered is that that brace was in the way. So the solution was easy. They took the hammer and they just dented it out of the way. So a factory 100M you'll see will have a dent in that uh, little X brace right at the, at, right at the bottom there. Um, some will have a real kink and others will have just a little ding. And if you run your hand down that brace, which we have, we removed the grill and I ran my hand down it, you can feel where they've kind of they've hammered on it to get it out of the way. It's a small thing, another small thing, but something that you want to look for uh, when you're looking at a factory M. We've just gone over the car from stem to stern. We looked at the heritage certificate and we checked the chassis number, the engine number and the body number and confirmed that it's a matching number car. We then looked at the bonnet and boot lid and confirmed that they are both matching number items and three of the four pieces of cockpit molding are the correct matching number items. We then moved on and we had a look at the high performance Le Mans modification kit. The distributor and the vacuum advance, the parts numbers on the intake manifolds and carburetors and found that all of the correct Le Mans pieces are on the car. So what we have is a matching number 100M which has had a gold level Concours restoration performed on it. These are the cars that they raced at Le Mans in 1953. They raced them in the Mille Emilia. They also raced them at Sebring. They are quick, nimble, and a joy to drive.